Steven and Cassandra give us a really nice words. So we get all the shitty weather and the rainy weather when we are in the bush and the nice sunny and clear weather when we are on the passes and that's what's been happening right now. That's great. When you think about adventure, in your head, probably thanks to the movies, you often imagine this incredible, oversaturated, beautiful picture where nothing can go wrong. This 3x story where the only thing that matters is that last ride in a sunset. But if someone would offer you an adventure, but instead of the word adventure, they would rephrase it as a type of suffering with reward at the end, would you accept it? It was Christmas 2015, somehow I ended up on the south of the South Island of New Zealand on this Christmas party in the camp where I stayed. There I met these two German guys, Chris and Sasha. They mentioned that they have an adventure coming up and out of courtesy they asked me if I wanted to join. Naturally I said yes because I thought I have what it takes when in reality I didn't. What do you know about Dusky Track? You get to know a lot about Dusky Trek because everyone says says that it's very hard, very complicated and some people try to scare you away and tell you that you should better not do it. But I think it's eight days at least and um, probably we will need more time because some areas could be prone to flooding. And um, yeah, we'll see. It's quite hard, it's a green hell. And um, a lot of people, not lot, not many people, take that challenge. It will be the longest walk we we did or we are going to do uh, since we're here in New Zealand. And yeah, I expect some troubles probably, some problems to solve on our way to the end. But I think if we if we're going to do it together. Thing will work. There was also this Latvian guy living in that camp. Uh, first time I met the guy, he had no shoes. And that's nothing strange for New Zealand. Everybody walks around barefoot. But this guy was something else. We would play frisbee in the camp occasionally. And he would run over sharp pebbles and gravel and stones like, like he had shoes when he didn't. After a little persuasion, he decided to join us, but only under one condition. I'm trying, trying to be the first known man to cross Dusky Track barefoot. After Ludwig's two other guys decided to join us, David and Eric. They were both into photography and because I just got my first DSLR I was excited. I wanted to film this trip and learn about photography and here I had all these guys that I can learn from. Thank you. The hike starts on Lake Hauroko. The speedboat took us over the lake and dropped us at the beginning of the track. When you get there, there's no phone signal, there's no one living anywhere nearby, and the boat that drops you off at the start only goes twice a week. So, once you're there, if anything happens, your way out is that boat, other side of the track, minimum seven days away on Lake Manapuri, or a helicopter evacuation. We rented a little GPS brick and hope to God that we won't need to use it. to 
the hut now. Um, three hours of walking behind us. Ludwig is doing it barefoot. Big respect. He's doing well, huh? just a few cups. And now this is our first three wire bridge, one after another. First day was mild uphill, 6 or 7 hours, and when we reached the hut, I was so exhausted I started vomiting. It was a horrible feeling, being in the middle of nowhere, with the full 7 days ahead of you, already worried that I won't be able I to continue. I have some kind of a wood in my feet, and I can't get it out. What? And it's fucking painful. Yeah. Like this is okay. I swear, throw it back. We are here, it's beautiful, and we are keep going, 2 kilometers in second day. <laughs> Will be maximum 4 and a half hours, <laughs> 5 kilometers. What shall I say? We started climbing up and up in the mountains towards Lake Row and another hut. Already on the first day, we were completely covered in sand fly bites. These little annoying aggressive flies. When they bite, it's not like mosquitoes. You actually feel the bite like a little needle piercing your skin. Luckily, there's none of them up on the mountain where Lake Row Hut is. So it was an amazing feeling being able to hang outside. Something we still didn't appreciate enough. What's the name of the lake again? It's lake Row. So right now we're at the Lake Row. We just took a bath. And we're pretty wet, but it's all good. It's foggy, it's cold, and we did the second day. So tomorrow, new day. Yeah. All good. Lake Row and the whole section of the track that goes over the Pleasant Range is simply incredible. I can easily say that was the highlight of the track, if not the highlight of all the sceneries I've seen till that point. Just have to see how the weather's going on. 
and the, the, the paths are not inaccessible. We could see the hut from the top, but to get there we had to go down this three hour long technical descent. My poor equipment was already taking a toll on my back and knees and that descent only made it worse. Before reaching the Loch Marie hut we had to cross this three wire bridge, one of 20 plus in total on the track, but this one was pretty high up in the air. And what's incredible is that when the floods hit that area, that bridge gets completely submerged. And also, as Chris and Sasha explained, oh. if you don't see dead trees in the water, you better turn around or you will get stuck on Dusky. Hit the low point today. Really low. I was so low. Haven't been so low anywhere in my life. I thought I'm gonna stay up there. And the hat never came, but... Then I found it, and I was so happy. Best day in your life when you found it. One thing I found in this hut is calendar of Croatia. No way. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, in a country in the middle of nowhere, you find the calendar of Croatia. That's pretty crazy, huh? Four day took us to the furthest point of the track, Supper Cove on Dusky Sound. Last mile before the hut is probably the most technical part of the whole trek, and that part only took us about two hours. But when we got to the dusky sound, we were kind of happy. I'm Quentin, and uh, maybe we will go for a swim now, tomorrow, same, back, same way back. How's your feet feel? Ah, today was a great day after yesterday. After yesterday everything felt great, so quite happy about today. On the day 5 we were supposed to go back the same way to Loch Marie hut again and then take the route towards Lake Manapuri. Beginning was supposed to be that technical part near the hut again and no one was looking forward to it. But boys made a yeah. discovery in the hut we're that waiting morning. waiting for the low <laughs> there were, yeah, there some sand flies There was here, a map so on the wall that showed the tide schedule and it turned out that we, if we start moving earlier than planned we can skip that technical part close to the hut that we had to deal with yesterday and walk back over the shallow bay. Sasha, David and Eric refused to get wet and took the high ground. Ludwigs, Chris and I decided to dive in the bay with our backpacks high in the air. It was probably the most fun we had on the whole trip. We all felt tired and Ludwig's feet days into mud and stones and grass were killing him. He said that those were done by mud snakes, the sharp fallen branches hiding in the mud and he stepped on many many of them. He was falling behind more and more as we were progressing and we were all afraid that he won't be able to make the whole way barefoot. But he was still going strong, slow but strong. How did you do that? We started the day from the Loch Marie hut again. The goal was Kintail hut, right under another mountain passage.
That day seemed extremely long and boring, but offered some nice views as we were passing between these sharp mountain peaks. The whole thing was starting to get mentally exhausting for me. Beauty didn't matter, as it was littered with sand flies. Sound of water was becoming this constantly present, irritating noise. I hated the taste of the oats and peanuts and stupid pastas we cooked every day, and a backpack that I fell in love with when I bought it was sinking its traps in my shoulders more and more every day. I just wanted this torture to end. Sam, we just start walking uh, from Kintail Hut to Upper Bay Hut. Today will be a very, very hard climb, I think. Uh, we're just here on the edge to the jungle. We're going to enter it now and yeah. We'll see what's coming now. They started with lots of fallen trees, lots of technical parts and all uphill. When we were finally high above the tree line, everybody was relieved. Everyone but Ludwig's. The wounds on his feet were okay walking up the rocky and muddy jungle-like forests, but the grass that took over near the top was finding its way into his cuts. That was good, huh? Good fun. Stony. The trek took us over the center pass that day, and when we reached the top, we got another bird's eye glimpse into beauty of Fjordland. Eight days in the wild was too much for me and I couldn't wait to put aside my Walmart backpack and finally have my shoulders heal themselves from the unpadded straps. I guess the other guys felt the same. David and Eric were not taking photos that much anymore. Chris was mentioning home too often. Sasha was mad because he finally got his boots wet. And Ludwigs couldn't wait to put his shoes back on. The goal that day was the road that will take us down to the port on Lake Manapuri. But we walked and walked and road wasn't there. Our ride in the sunset was so close. We saw the road far above us, going parallel with the trail we were on, but two ways were too stubborn to connect. Until. I can proudly say that I was present in the moment when the first person ever crossed one of the New Zealand's toughest tracks, Dusky Track, barefoot. Ah. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel? Cool, tired, feet are bummed so much. I'm happy. It's a great challenge. Whew. Cool. Perfect. Human mind has this weird ability where it can take some of the worst moments and the biggest suffering and create the great memories out of them, the adventures. There's this quote that I found online and it describes this perfectly. An adventure is only an inconvenience rightly considered. Almost four years overdue, I finally found motivation and courage to complete this project, the promise that I gave to these guys, that I'll make a movie from the shitty footage that I took on my first DSLR. Even though a few weeks after Dusky was the last time I ever saw these guys, 
I always like to think that if the adventure calls, Dusky Crew will be ready. <laughs>